celebrate with us.
Holy Spirit drawed you. He elected you. He brought you to Jesus. You didn't find Jesus. Jesus was here way before you and I was here. I might not be where I want to be, but I'm not what I used to be. But I know a proper song, and his name is Jesus. Oh, I feel like preaching now. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. This is a day that our Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. I want to say good morning all to all those who are here, those who are watching by Facebook and by YouTube. God is still good. Amen? Amen. Granting us new mercies each day. Amen? So we come this morning to lift up the name of Jesus, and we want you to get excited about the fact that God allowed us to see the dawn of a new day. Amen? He didn't have to do it, but he did. Amen? So we come to lift up his name today because he's worthy of our honor, glory, and praise. We are the Stony Point Baptist Church located here in Soddy Daisy, Tennessee. Edward L. Thrasher is our pastor, and we trust that you have prepared your hearts and minds to, for worship this morning. Amen? Which means you got to set aside all that junk, all that stuff that easily besets you that we might worship him in spirit and in truth. Is that all right? So I need to see some examples of the fact that you're all ready to worship this morning. Amen? Why don't we give the Lord a hand clap this morning? Amen? Let us, we are ready to lift up the name of Jesus this morning. And so we're going to ask for some scripture, and then we're going to have some prayer, and then we're going to move right on in to our worship service this morning. But you better be ready. Better be ready. Amen? Amen. Come on with some scripture. Praise God. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Good morning to all out there that's coming in with us on YouTube and Facebook. It is such an honor to be back in the house of the Lord and standing here and reading his words to his people. Thank you, Lord. If you have your Bibles, please go with me to the book, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting at 16 to 18. Holy Spirit led me here. Thank you, Lord. And it reads these words. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Through outward, we are wasting away. Yet inward, we are being renewed day by day. For our light and monetary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that is far overweight them all. So we fix our eyes on what is not seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is only temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And in short, that scripture was saying we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. We want to now prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. And I, I trust that you guys know we got a lot to be praying about. Amen. When we look at what's all that's going on in this nation alone, uh, we need to be in some serious prayer. And when we think about all that has happened in Kentucky, this past week with all the flooding. And I think the, I got a count uh, this morning on the news. I think it's like over 25 have perished in the floods and they're expecting to find many, many more. And uh, we have to say, thank God, that's not us. But we need to be praying uh, for those families who are going through it. Some of them have lost everything. And uh, water is a powerful force. And sometimes we underestimate the power of water and the force of water. And as you, if you've seen the news and you've seen some of the stuff that's going on there, you'll know that that water can wash away a lot of stuff. Amen? But it's nothing like the blood of Jesus that washes away a multitude of sin. Amen? What can wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So we need to be 
praying and thanking God for, for the fact that he is still in control. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, if God is still in control, why are we going through so much? I, and you know, you, you don't have to ask those so spiritual like they, you never asked that question. Because I know you asked that question. Why, God, if you're so much in control, why am I going through what I'm going through? And sometimes you just ask yourself and look in the mirror and say, sometimes it's needful for us to go through. Otherwise, we wouldn't be on bending knees sometimes. So God allows things to come into our lives that we might continue to look to him who is the author and finisher of our faith, the one we know who is in control of all. It may not feel like it. It may not seem like it sometimes, but we need to know deep down inside you need to know that God is in control of all things. Amen? So let us get ready to go to the throne of grace. I want you to be thinking about somebody you know that stands in the need of prayer, with a family member, a co-worker, uh, a friend that you, you know, uh, that stands in the need of prayer. And I want you to put them on your heart and mind at this time as we, as we go petition the Lord for uh, his grace and his mercy uh, for us at this time. Let's go to the Lord. Father, we do thank you and praise you for who you are. We thank you, Lord God, that you are a God who is setting high, but you are also looking low, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your loving kindness, and we thank you, Lord God, for your new mercies that you grant us each day, Lord. We thank you for the fact, Father, that you woke us up this morning, Lord God. You didn't have to do it, but you did, Lord, because somebody, Lord God, uh, found their bed to be there cooling board this morning, Lord God, but you touched us with a finger of love and woke us up this morning, Lord God, and gave us our right mind, Lord God, to, to prepare ourselves. You gave us the strength so we can dress ourselves and feed ourselves, Lord God, and then you protected us as we drove down the dangerous highways, Lord God. We, we thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you for how you continue to demonstrate your love for us despite us, Lord God, because sometimes, Father, we can be a little bit unruly, Lord God. We continue to do some things, Lord God, that displease you, Lord God. We, we will promise you one week, Lord God, that we're going to be right, we're going to do right, but, Father, we end up falling back into that same sin again, Lord God. But we're so thankful that we serve a loving God, a forgiving God, who said if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we thank you, Lord God, for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you for the blood of Jesus, Lord God, who covers all our sins, Lord God, past, present, and future, Lord God. Even those things that we haven't done yet, Lord God, you know we're going to do, Lord God. You still forgive us for it right now because you send your son Jesus to die on the cross for all our sins. And we want to say thank you for that right now, Father. And we just pray, Father, that you press it on our hearts, Lord God, not to take advantage of that forgiveness, Lord God. Father, you, you help us to realize that we just cannot continue in sin, Lord God, but we ought to be mindful of the fact, Lord God, that you've placed in us the love of Christ, Lord God, that we have a desire now to want to do right and to walk right, Lord God, and to be an example for others for you, Lord. And we just pray right now, Father, you would touch all those here today, Lord God. Strengthen us helping us to stand in the gap for you, Lord God, that we might point out to other men, women, boys, and girls about the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, Lord God. Help us to be good, transparent Christians, Lord God, that when others look at us, they don't see us, but they see your son, Jesus the Christ, Father. So help us to demonstrate that love one toward another, Lord God. And we pray, Father, you would help us to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Therefore, Father, help us. Inspire us to study to show ourselves approved, being workmen and women need not be ashamed, but rightfully dividing the word of truth. Help us, Father, to walk in the light as you are in the light, that we might have fellowship one with another, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to let this mind be in us that is also in Christ Jesus, Lord God. Now, Father, we pray for this choir this morning, Father, as they come to sing songs of signs. Strengthen them, Lord. Help them to sing with uplifted voices today, Lord God, to glorify you and only you, Lord. And we pray for our pastor to come to preach an unadulterated word, Lord God. May he preach it with simplicity and power, Lord God. That even the smallest and the youngest of mine, Lord God, will come running, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved, Lord God? And we pray right now, Father, you just have your way in this service, Lord God. We pray, Father, that you will allow us. 
to be good examples for you, Lord God. Allow us, Lord God, strengthen us, Lord God, to be what you have called and purpose in our hearts to be, Lord. We just pray right now, Father, just have your way in each and every one of our lives. Get the glory out of each one of our lives, Lord God, that we might be what you've called us to be in these last and evil days. We pray for this nation, Lord God. We pray for those who are suffering through this flood and through fires out west, Lord God. We pray for those who are still going through the wars in Ukraine, Lord God. Father, comfort them in their hours of need, Lord God. Pray for all those who have lost loved ones, Lord God. Comfort their hearts, Lord God. We ask that you have all, all this, Lord God, is in within your control, Lord God. We ask all this in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen. 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 All right, choir. I'm going to turn it over to you. Amen.
I'm on the right road now. I'm on the right road now. I'm on the right road now. I fixed it up with my Jesus. Long time ago, I'm on the right road now. 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 I fixed it up with my Jesus. I fixed it up with my Jesus. Long, long time ago. I'm on the right road now. I'm on the right road now. I'm on the right road now. If I, if I, I would walk right. Oh, he said. He said. Uh, if I, if I, I would walk right. Oh, mm, and God said. He said. Uh, if I, if I, I would walk right. If I, if I, I would live right. Live right. Lord, and he said, he said, if I, if I, I would live. live right. Oh, and God said, he said, if I, if I, I would live right. If I, if I, I would pray right. Mm, and he said, he said, if I, if I, I would pray right. Mm, and he said, he said, if I, if I, I would pray right. He said he would make my, make my, make my enemies, enemies, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Oh, and he said, he said, 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 I'm Alpha, he said, and Omega, he said, I'm the beginning. The end. He said, I'm a healer he said, on a sick bed. He said, I'm a lawyer he said, in a courtroom. He said, I'm bread when you hump and say, I'm water he said, uh, when you thirsty. I'm joy, he said, in sorrow, he said, I'm hope, he said, for tomorrow, he said, I am, he said, the great I am, he said, and he said, he said, he said, he said it would make my
may believe that today? All of the glory. How many believe that all the glory? Not some, not part, but all the glory belongs to him. All of the glory belongs to you. Yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to All over this building. Come on, come on. Let's give him glory right now. Come on. My hallelujah belongs, belongs. to you. Yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Let's give God another hand clap of praise in this place. He certainly is worthy of it. The Lord has been so kind, so gracious. He allowed us to come here one more time. And I don't know about you, I'm glad about it. With all the struggles, that we had to endure on this week alone with all the battles that we had to go through the uncertain times that we live in nobody but the Lord Jesus Christ Lord thank you Father in heaven we thank you for the word today we need a fresh anointing Enlighten our hearts and our minds and our spirits in such a way, Lord, that we will know that we have heard from the Lord Jesus Christ. Minister to us wherever part we need ministering to, Lord. There are so many people struggling, battling, hurting, abused, sick. And somebody needs a deliverance today. Need a word that's going to encourage, build, and enlighten. We ask this in Jesus the Christ, we do pray. And we all say together, will you join me and give God another hand clap of praise in this place? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sir, we give God glory on this morning that he allowed us to be here. Uh, people don't realize sometimes that it's a struggle. It can be a struggle, uh, fighting against the elements of life. And yet we, we come by faith and not by sight. That's what the believers should be operating in. Amen? I want to try to keep you along on this fifth Sunday. We do know and recognize it is the fifth Sunday. Amen. The last Sunday of this month. Amen of July. Praise the Lord, everybody. Time is just moving on. Ain't waiting on nobody. I got a call this morning from my cousin that one of my cousins died on this morning around 18. Just never know. It's just a blessing to be alive. Amen. It's just a blessing. I want to turn our attention. Well, let me just do this in review for those who have been here, praise God, you can have opportunity to review what we have been studying for the last four or five studies on uh, Matthew uh, chapter 5, verse 13, when Jesus called us, we are the salt of the earth, amen? He could have called us anything else. He could have called us the scum of the earth, but he called us the salt of the earth. He compared and likened us unto the salt of the earth the earth. Amen. Now watch this. In review, and those who have just tuned in to uh, this uh, uh, YouTube program, amen, service, salt, 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 it, it has over 14,000 uses. 
in my discovery, over 14,000 uses. And the Lord has shown me the three primary things that salt does. One, salt is used, as you know we learned, is a seasoning, amen, a seasoning. Salt is put into food, amen, and it brings the best out of the food, amen, enhance the flavor of the food. Can I get a witness, anybody? So salt is for good. It's flavorful. And that's how we as Christians sh should be. We should bring the best out of people. Can I get a witness, anybody? We should bring the best out of people. Not the worst out of people, but the best out of people. That's what salt does. And you've been a salt shaker, you should be bringing the best out of people. Well, second thing that salt can do is a preservative. Before they have refrigerators, they had uh, use salt as a as a means of, of putting on food so it wouldn't decay or keep the bacteria away from uh, the, the from the food. And that's how we ought to be. We ought to be a preserved a preservative of truth. Amen. We should be preserved to when people are lying, we should be able to tell the truth in a dark situation. Amen. So salt is used not only for uh, flavorful or making flavor food taste better, but also preservative or preserving the, the people that, that we come in contact. Well, the third primary thing I think that ought to be talked about today is the catalyst. Amen. Salt is used as a catalyst. When salt is put and mixed with certain chemicals, it has a chemical reaction. You put salt on ice, it will melt the ice. Amen. It turns that ice into water. Amen. That's how you and I ought to be. When we ought to be a catalyst uh, for Jesus Christ. When we ought to have a chemical, ex uh, I would say, chemical uh, change around our environment. We ought to make a difference in people. Amen. Lives. Amen. We when, we, when people see us, they ought to be, the, 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 the reaction ought to be different. The environment ought to be different. The family ought to be different. The world ought to be different because we are in that vicinity. Amen? Amen. On our job, it'll be a, we'll have a reaction. People ought to react different because we are the salt. We are salt shakers. Amen? Anybody a salt shaker? Amen. Amen. We are salt shakers. Amen. And we live in a dark world today. Times are very uncertain. We not only that, we've been dealing with salt as a, the ladders of salt. We deal with the the S, meaning to which this is a bad word in some people's culture, is to serve. Nobody wants to serve. Amen. Salt, salt, S for serve. Amen. We got to learn how to serve one another. We it's not all about you. Can I get a witness? We can't be selfish. We got to learn to serve one another. The Bible teaches us that, right? So S is for salt. S is for serve. And the A is for what? Accountability. We need to be accountable to somebody. We ought to give somebody the permission that we want to jump in our grill, to get in our face, to ask us the hard questions. Amen. We need to be accountable because if you are, if you don't have somebody that you can be accountable to, you are out of control. And some people like being out of control. If you if you got a, a habit, if you got a situation that you're dealing with and you need strength in that area, you need to give somebody, somebody say somebody, that you trust, amen, that you trust, that allow them to ask you the hard questions, to, to make you accountable to who you are and who you should be. Amen. So we talk about S is being served. A is for accountable. L, we talked about last week, love, love. The Bible teaches us and also indicates to us, it's a sign that we are his children when we love one another. Now, it's easy to love people that love you. But the Bible said, love those who hate you. Love those who misuse you. Love those who lie on you. Love those who ridicule your name. You got to learn to love your enemies. You got to learn to love and pray for your enemies. Amen. You're not saying a lot when you want to love people that love you. Anybody can do that. But you and I got to learn to love those who are unlovable. God loves us. Can I get a witness somebody? And look past our faults and met our needs. 
He loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only unique son to us, that we should, who should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we've got to love those who are unlovable, those who are on our job, those who are in our family, those who we come in contact, those who talk about us and ridicule our name. You've got to learn to love them people because God loves you. And how can you say you love God whom you never see? And you can't even love the, love the one next to you. Can I get a witness? Well, the last and final letter of this part five series is T. And I know you're wondering if you already know. You might already know because there's something in there. T is for teach. If you're going to be a good salt shaker, you got to learn how to serve. If you're going to be a good salt shaker in a dark world, you got to learn to be accountable to people. If you're going to be a good salt shaker, you got to learn to love people. If you're going to be a good salt shaker, you got to be under some good teaching. Can I get a witness in the Bible? And this, this, the culture that we live in, the culture that we, that we experience even today, people don't want to be taught nothing. Because we think we know it all. So one of the things to be a good salt shaker in this life, in this culture that we live, we got to be taught. Not only be taught, we got to teach others. Let me say that one more time. How can you teach others when you hadn't been taught? I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. If you don't, I, I know you don't have a scripture, but the Bible said the Hosea chapter 4. I'm going to go with my main thing. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 says these words. My people perish or destroy by the what? Lack of knowledge. Let me read what it says. It says right here. You got your Bibles out? You got your Bible? Because we're going to do some running for them real quick. My people are de destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because, why? Tell us why, Hosea. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. In that culture of that time, when the prophet Hosea said, the reason that you are being destroyed because you don't want to know truth. Because you reject the truth. Because you and I have made up our mind, we want to do it our way. And don't care what nobody else says. But, 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 it ought not be that way. It shouldn't be that way. He said, if you want to know who I am, 2 Timothy 2 and 15, study to show yourself approved. Rightly divide the truth. Amen. You got to study. You got to study who he is. If you want to know who Jesus is, get in the word. Get under some teaching. then guess what? You won't be destroyed. Especially when you receive the word. I've been in Bible study a long time. And I have seen people when the minister of God was ministering, there were people say, I'm not receiving that. Because they don't want to change. Because they don't want to change. They, they rather hear a lie than the truth. Okay, let's go somewhere. Y'all ready? All right, go to... Go to um, uh, Matthews, no, Mark 10, Mark 10. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out your way. Mark 10. Y'all won't believe this. You ever say amen? Mark 10, you have it? Look at verse 17. This is about, this is this story is about a rich young ruler. A rich, he was rich, we know he was rich. The Bible tells us he had great possession. And we know that he was a young man. Not only that, we know, watch this, he not only was a young man and he was rich, but guess what? He was a ruler. That means he had power and authority. Can I get a witness? Look at verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, Jesus, there came one running, excited, 
and kneeled to him and asked him, good master, notice how he, how he addressed Jesus, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit the eternal life? The brother's running, to, listen to the story, he's running, first of all. He kneels and asks the, asks the, asks the an important question, what must I do? In other words, he wants to be taught. He wants to know, what can I do to inherit eternal life? First of all, he got it all mixed up because there's nothing he can do. Jesus, Jesus said unto him, why calleth thou me good? Why are you calling me good? There is none good but one. That is God. It's amazing how people always brag how good a, good a person is. I'm a good person. The Bible just discount that. Because none of us good. No, not one. <laughs> I'm a good person. But the Bible just taught us that none of us are good in ourselves. Only God is good. Let me say it one more time. Only God is good. Verse 19, thou knowest, you knowledgeable. You, you said on some teaching, you know, you were raised around the word. You, you know, thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witnesses. Defraud not. Honor thou father, watch this, and thou brother, mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, <laughs> Master, all these things have I observed for my youth. I'm aware of thee, and I have practiced this. Then Jesus laid something really heavy on him. Okay, you got that. You, you believe you got all that master, right? But I'm going to leave something heavy on you. Have you ever been in church and some things that were said and you were, you know, because you did it and you did, you know, you were operating that spirit that, that the preacher was preaching about and you'd be saying, amen. you say, amen. Amen, preacher. But then when he starts saying some stuff that you know you know you shouldn't be doing, the amen is getting lower. And lower. Can I get a witness in it? But y'all looking at me strange. But long, as long as it's not knocking at your door, you can say amen. But when it starts to knock at your door, you, you got back, you do the moonwalk. Am I right? And some of y'all couldn't even say amen in verse 19. <laughs> okay, y'all go, but you, do I need to go back and read it? And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I, look at I reserve, observed from my youth. And Jesus beholding him, looking at him, loving on him, and said unto him, one thing. Tell me that one thing. One thing thou lackest. Go thy way. And sell whatsoever thou hast and give it to the poor. What? Huh? That sounds like a hard saying, isn't it? Remember the guy's young. He's, he has authority. He's a ruler. Amen. And he got plenty of money. And you asking me to go, go and sell my possessions. What? Really? Is that, what, is that what it's going to take for me to have eternal life? In other words, it wasn't about his possessions. It was about his obedience. It's about serving him and him alone, about loving on him. The Bible already said he loved him. But how much do you love God? Oh, I'm going somewhere with this. How much?
much do you love God? You sit under teaching week in and week out. And Jesus, as in this story, is giving him instruction because that's what teaching is. It's instruction. How to live for him. Without, listen, we've been destroyed because of lack of what? Knowledge. Knowledge is power. So when you have knowledge of what you need to do to live, we ought to operate in it. We ought to put it into practice. We ought to make it a part of our life. We ought to make it, listen, we got to make application. And if you don't put the word into action, it would destroy you, whatever you're dealing with. This guy was excited. He ran to Jesus, looking for an answer, like you and I do. We, we run to, to the church house. We go to the Bible, look for an answer because we're hurting. We, we need some joy. We need some love. We need some peace. And when God tells us what we need to do, we reject it. Because that's not a part of our culture. I don't want to do that now. It, it, it got to be a better way than that. I don't want to give up that man. Or that gal. I'm all in love and I'm shook up. And you really shook up too. I don't believe you have to give money to the church. Not no 10%. He get what I got left. I don't believe I have to go to church every Sunday. I don't believe I have to read my Bible every day. And when the Bible says you renew your mind daily. He gets another man. He can't tell me to come to church. You're right. That's why all the hell you catching. Because sometimes God allows stuff to come in your life to get your attention. Been there, done that more than one time. The thing about it is, are you serious about being taught? Or do you want somebody to tickle you? Do you want me to sit up here week in and week out and say, the Lord loves you and he'll give you a new car if you just keep on saying it every day. He'll pay your rent. He'll do this. He'll send you that man that you're looking for. He'll send you that woman. That, all that stuff. All about you. But when it comes to about him and what he wants out of us, we reject it. When the Bible tells us, fail not to assemble ourselves, how can you get around it? He didn't make a suggestion. He didn't say, well, if you feel like going to church, son, go, go ahead. If you don't, don't worry about it. The Bible clearly teaches us. He said, love your enemy. And don't be phony about it. It was not something you he gave you to think about or get some thought to. It was a command. It was to his children. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. I'm teaching better than y'all saying amen. He said, he said, he said, you have to learn to surrender yourself. Totally. Is it easy? No, because you always wrestle against the flesh. The flesh against the spirit. You ever been in a situation you're arguing with somebody, you know you need to shut up. And the spirit says, you need to be quiet. Because this argument is not going anywhere. But you say, you, your, your mind says, I'm going to tell her one more time. I'm going to tell her one more time. If I just get this out, if I just get it out. And all we do is make the situation worse and worse and worse. And then, then listen, if I just give him a piece of my mind, that piece you gave, you won't get back. The brother, Jesus gave him instruction. I'm done. He said, Jesus gave him instruction. He said, then Jesus beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, one thing thou lackest, go thy way and sell all you have, whatsoever thou hast. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. And listen, because this, evidently this man, whatever he had, he held dearly to himself. 
We'll, we'll do everything else, but we won't get in the word of God. We'll watch sisters. <laughs> Empire. P Valley. I know I'm hitting something. Y'all know. Don't look at me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all are BET folks in here. <laughs> he, he, and he and he answered, say, he said, then Jesus behold he loved him and said unto him, one thing thou lack, go thy way and sell whatsoever thou hast and give it to the poor and thou shalt have treasures. I'm going to give you more than what you have. Treasures in heaven and come and take up your cross and all you got to do is follow me. Follow me. Imitate me. Follow me. Do what I do. But verse 22 is the key. The Bible said, and he was sad. Attitude. He was, at first, he was excited. He was running to him. He just didn't get the answer he was looking for. He thought, maybe he thought he could buy his way in. You know, I got enough money. I can buy my own ticket to help him. Didn't work that way. In other words, Jesus wanted us to give up ourselves for him. He said he was sad. S-A-D, at the same, at the word that Jesus spoke into his life. I wonder how many people have left him more sad and because they weren't willing to give up what they needed to give up. There were sermons and sermons and sermons and sermons and sermons and over and over the same truth, over and over, but yet you rejected. You rejected the, the, the truth. You rather believe a lie. Than the truth. All of us have done that. The truth is all of us. Because we don't want to give up something. We want something. But we don't want to give up nothing. We don't want to give up ourselves. We don't want to give up our money. We don't want to give up our time. Our talent. We're ready to sit, sit down and be a pew dweller. And I dwell when I want to. Any given son. I, I may show up. Mm. And he said at this scene and went away. Watch this. He went away greed for he had great possessions. He went away greed, hurting. I can't do that. Can you, uh -huh. No way, buddy. No, no, no. I ain't giving up that. You know how long I've been with that? If I'm talking to anybody here. And, 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 and see, that's the problem. It comes down, who do you love? And how much do you love God if you're not willing to surrender yourself under his mighty hand? And let him exalt you in due season. I got one more verse and I'm done. Listen, he, Jose already told us that, didn't he? He said, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Isn't that what the word said? Go to Matthews. Matthews chapter 18. And I'm done. I should go to 11. Verse 28, and I'm done. He said, come. Come unto me. All, not some, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Come. I love this right here, verse 29. Take my yoke. I'm preaching right here, just reading. Upon you and watch this. Come here, come here, get closer. And learn of me. For I am meek 
and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest. Is anybody need some rest in here? You've been trying to find rest in other people. You've been trying to find rest in your family. You've been trying to find rest in your children. You've been trying to find rest in drugs and alcohol. But guess all it costs you is misery. He said, I'm meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Salt. If you're going to be a good salt shaker in a dark world that we live in, this culture that we have, you got to learn to serve. You got to learn to be accountable to others. But you just can't do what you want to do when you want to do it. You can't say, I'm going to do what I want to do. You can't have that kind of attitude. If you, listen, if you're not accountable to somebody, you are out of control. If you don't allow somebody to get in your mess, get in your face, and say, listen, that ain't right, then you're out of control. And we definitely got to learn to love each other better. God is love. If God lives in us, we ought to be showing love to one another. And to do all of that, to tie all of that up in one bow, you got to be taught. You got to be taught. You got you to get in the Word. You got to allow the Holy Spirit to deal with you and say, surrender to me. Lord, I surrender what you want me to do. What, and would he tell us to do it? Don't fight. Just do it. Just, just do it like Mary told you. Just do it. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to hurt. But just do it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Put your hands together, God. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. That ends this series on a light in a dark world. And I pray you got something out of it that will enhance your relationship with Jesus Christ. It makes a difference. You're going to have some problems. You're going to have some situations. But knowing that Jesus is with you because he said in his word, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Father, we thank you again for this word today. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit challenging us to look at ourselves and where we are in our relationship with you. We want the goodies, but we don't want to do nothing to, to enhance what you have given us. Lord, you said give ourselves totally away to you. Trust you and walk by faith. And to those who I'm, who I'm listening by YouTube and Facebook, we challenge, been challenged to be the salt. Because he said in his word that you are the salt of the earth. And all we got to do is start learning to be salt and then spread that salt to others. That we can be a flavor to this world. We can be a, a preservative of truth. We can be a catalyst. We can make a change in our environment that we live in and that we work in and that we come in contact. Because we are your salt of the earth. And if the salt have lost its flavor... It's no good for nothing but to be trumpeted up under the man of, man's foot. Lord, restore right now. In Jesus' name. We stand up all over this building right now. The invitation is extended to you right now. Invitation. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Is it, is it another? Is it another? Whatever you're going. If you don't know Jesus Christ in your life, why don't you come? 
The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be, not probability, you will be saved. You're struggling. You're struggling. You're hurting. Things are not working out in your behalf. And just maybe God's trying to get your attention to have a stronger and better relationship and more faithful relationship. Is anybody here today? Maybe you need to be a part of this church family. And the Holy Spirit is calling you here to be a part of this vineyard. If you're here, won't you move by faith? If the Holy Spirit is prompting you, touching your heart, you ought to come. Is anyone else? All right, one more time. Put your hands together. Come on, let's give God some glory here. Come on. This little light of mine. That's little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm Come on, give God a hand clap of praise in this house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Miss Erica, you have come down for prayer. Is that right? Okay. Anything you want to share or you want to just let us pray for you? Just pray for you. It's going through some changes, huh? Struggles. Join the club. Right. <laughs> but God is able to do abundantly more than we think or even ask. And all you got to do is to walk by faith. We've been talking, and you know that we've been talking. You've been, you it really touched my heart to see you come down. But I know you haven't been to church in the moment, but God is touching you. He's doing something within you. You didn't come here by yourself. The Lord's Spirit is prompting and moving you. And whatever the struggles you may be having at this moment, just know God got you. He'll never leave you. That's a promise I hold on to. He'll never leave you. Never, 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 never. No matter what you're dealing with, never leave you, nor forsake you. Let's pray for it. Father God, we come right now to say thank you for your power that's in her. Strengthen her right now, Lord. You know the battles, the struggles, the hurt, the pain that she may have to endure. But greater is you that is in her than he that's in the world. Lord, keep our mind focused on you, Lord God. When she even try to stray away, bring her back by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let her know that God is the answer. In the times she may have doubt, encourage her, Lord. Use some person or people to encourage her spirit. Then when she tried to go down these roads, that she won't go around by herself. We love you, Lord. We thank you for her willingness and her spirit to humble herself before you now. And we give you the honor and glory. Be with her, her family. Let her know, God, we'll continue to strengthen her, comfort her, give her grace where she needs it and mercy in Jesus' name, we do pray. We say amen. amen. Give God another hand, Claire. Come on, he's in here. It's all right. God is good. He's good, isn't he? Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
Sister T, you come and share with us. Good morning, one and all. To our Facebook and YouTube friends, thank you for choosing to worship with us today. Please continue to like, share, comment, and invite, and we welcome everyone that's here in the sanctuary. Hi, Cameron. Uh, let's see. Um, we also invite everyone to come to church on Sunday. Next Sunday, we'll be here for you. And please join us for Power Pack Bible Study Hour on Tuesdays at 630. You can join us on Facebook, YouTube, and on our website, stonypointbc.com. Um, we are going to do our tithing after me. And for those of you that are not here in the sanctuary and you want to keep your commitment to tithing, there are multiple ways to give. You can send it in by mail, um, you can use Venmo or Cash App, or you can text it. Um, also, if anyone would like their name added to our prayer list, please call us at the church at 423-332-5444, or send us an email to stonypointbaptist3 at yahoo.com. Um, church family, please be in prayer for Sister Carol White. She's having some things going on, but she asked for us to pray for her as a church. Also, last week, I let you all know about Autumn Parker, that she does have a um, GoFundMe page, and she also has a cash app um, that you can use. And when you use the cash app, there won't be a fee, so that would be preferable to use the cash app. But if you still want to use the cash app link, let me know, and I can send it to you. Her... Um, um, cash app name is dollar sign X Y S M O M M A. So if you didn't catch that, just let me know and I'll send it to you. Okay. That um, concludes our church announcements. I pray you all enjoy your beautifully blessed day. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. You know that's that's a bad thing when preaching forget about the money, don't I? I get caught up sometime. Amen. Bible said, where's your heart? It was your treasure. It was your heart. Is. Amen. So it's giving time. Let's give him some giving music. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to give back to you what you have given us. We ask you bless those who had it to give and that you increase and give them abundancy. And those that didn't have it today, Lord, we ask you to bless them as well. Lord, you reign on the just as well as the unjust. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We stand up with this good... Father in heaven, we give you honor. We give you glory. You're so worthy for all that you have done for us. And the good news is you're not through with us yet. Let this word that was sown in the hearts of your people we increase their knowledge of who you are. That we may not be destroyed because we don't want to know. And we won't reject the Lord. We're going to receive it in the name of Jesus. Let the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule henceforth forevermore. Amen. Uh.
Go in peace. Thank <laughs> you.